this is my duty. I'm very, very grateful to give them a chance to see the tools our old people have used how to build the DAO. We have 50 balloons here in Qatar that are visiting from 17 different countries. People come and join and they enjoy the hospitality of Qatar. Hello and welcome to Qatar 365 with me, Laila Humaira. On this episode, we go behind the scenes to explore some of Doha's marquee winter events. We begin at an annual festival celebrating Qatar's marine heritage. Long before oil and gas, pearls used to be the country's major export. To go deep into the sea, pearl divers would set sail on classic boats that are known traditionally as dhows. And as Adel Halim found out, the Dao Festival is a reminder to locals and tourists alike of that rich history. These Dao boats have been cruising the Arabian Sea for centuries. Today, their presence is more symbolic than functional. But these traditional sailing vessels once served as a lifeline for people in the region. They were used to fish, dive for pearls, and transport fresh water, fruits, and heavy goods. This rich history was recently on full display for visitors at the 13th Katara Traditional Dao Festival. Dao's go back generations in Qatar. Khalid al Badr's family relied on the sea. He was eight years old when he first joined his father and grandfather on a boat. But his grandfather had already stopped pearl diving by then, making his last dive in 1948. Collecting pearls was just part of the dangerous and demanding profession. This is a hard time to move through a long distance destination between Qatar to Bombay to Zanzibar in Africa. This is the most difficult with our uh, goal here is to destroy something like but once they move to the deep water they have to go to the ocean uh, indian ocean this is the time where they thought they need to be uh, very smart enough to get to the distance by basic tools they have the 64 year old has many of those tools on display at his family's museum for history to live on for generations to come. This is my duty. I'm very, very uh, grateful to give them a chance to see the tools they have been, our old people have used how to build the Dow. I show them this equipment, how to navigate the boats during the day and night. I have the equipment now to tell the people by vision. They have to see it, they have to judge it, how difficult is life without technology. These beautifully crafted boats are deeply rooted in Qatar's maritime history. 12 countries are taking part in the 13th traditional Dao festival. The majority of participating countries are coming from around the region, but also include teams coming from India, Tanzania, and Portugal. Portugal's ambassador to Qatar says his host country has more in common with his home country than one may think. The maritime tradition is the same, of course. There are many differences because Portugal is uh, close to the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, Qatar is the Gulf Sea. But uh, so we have fishing tradition, and Qatar is the pearl tradition. But uh, the, the culture, the, the sea, the water, the boats, that's what made me feel this, this connection. Oman also has a rich maritime heritage. From Mana bin Saif al Habsi, a festival of Dao's has special significance. مصطلح المحام اللي على قلبي اللي هو التجار اللي كان في المستقبل اللي كان في في الماضي. Back at the Al Badr Museum, Khalid hopes memories of the past always remain present. Let them come and see by vision how the boat is built, how they communicating the people from different countries, how they are selling in the markets, bargaining the price, and a lot of things which is gone, but it is really worth a visit. 
Qatar may not be the first place you think of when you hear Winter Wonderland. But for the second year in a row, it's the place to be for the festive season. With more than 50 rides and attractions, like the giant Ferris wheel behind me, the Lucille Winter Wonderland has an exciting lineup of family-friendly activities for visitors of all ages. I got a special tour of this sprawling theme park with Marwan Dimas. Chief Marketing and Sales Officer at Estisma Holding for a look at how Lucille Winter Wonderland stands out as a one-of-a-kind attraction in the region. So Marwan, thank you for having us on Welcome. this cool but busy evening it seems. Yeah. So Lucille Winter Wonderland um, is one of Qatar's newest theme parks. Yes. But it's also one of the first in the region, right? The first of its kind in the region. Oh, we have a, we have a lot. Of course, we have the iconic rides that, uh, that are from the beginning, from last year. You see behind us the Ferris wheel. This is the highest Ferris wheel. It's 51 meters high. This is 93,000 square meters. Between rides, activities and games, this is something around 80 rides and games. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. I, I think it's one of the most amazing projects of our company. If you look at the lights, at the vibes, at the ambiance, it's, it always feels nice and cool to be here. And we know that Qatar, of course, is a premium tourist destination all year round. But what makes winter so special to be in this country? The weather, of course. This is, uh, and I say, discover winter in uh, Qatar. Uh, so, as you can see, the weather is good. Everybody's out. All the activities the country has been doing, a lot of effort and change in the past several years just after the FIFA. The country has become very attractive. Qatar has hosted three million or three and a half million tourists now. It's double what they hosted last year with the World Cup. So it's amazing. The winter season is amazing in Qatar, simply. There's no doubt about it. So we've spoken a lot about the rides and all of the things on offer, but I hear there's much more coming up. Can you share a little bit about what's coming up this season and also next year? Yeah, because the season has just started. So we got season two. Very exciting things coming up from here till the end of season two, but season three is going to be amazingly beautiful. Amazingly beautiful. Sometimes the park is over capacity. Or our capacity at one time is uh, five to 6,000 at the same time. So we are reaching capacity with uh, the tourists and the visitors. And uh, this is what makes it work. This concept is not globally, it's not new. So this type of theme park is a classical, everybody loves it. Whether you are a kid, you're a big, it doesn't matter. Next, we take a short drive down the Lucille Highway back to the Katara Cultural Village to witness another winter spectacle. This time, the excitement is up in the sky. This is the fourth edition of the Qatar Balloon Festival, a yearly display showcasing the world's most colourful balloons from all over the world. I got to meet the team behind this unique event for a look at how it's becoming a favourite way to see Qatar. It's a joyful location. People come, have a good time, look at the balloons from uh, up close. It's joyful uh, for everyone. Captain Hassan paved the way for the first hot air balloon to fly in Qatar skies in 2019. And every year since then, the Qatar Balloon Festival has been soaring to greater heights. Live entertainment, interactive games, a musical parade, and the glow of dozens of hot air balloons, all to welcome a new flying season. We have 50 balloons here in Qatar that are visiting from 17 different countries. So it's basically a, a here becomes a melting pot of cultures. People come and join and they enjoy the hospitality of Qatar. Lukas Mikilevich is among the dozens of pilots featured in the festival. This evening's event gives people a chance to get up close to the hot air balloons. Lucas and his team put on a show for visitors, but he's not allowed to fly the balloons at night. For those wanting to take a ride, they'll have to wait until the morning. It's five in the morning in Doha. While the rest of the country is still asleep, a crowd is slowly gathering in Katara. And Lucas is back. This time, he'll have paying customers on board. For those lucky enough to snap up a ticket on the morning flight, the early wake-up call is well worth it. 
for a chance to take a magical ride on these majestic hot air balloons. But even if you miss out on that opportunity, the sight of them taking off and floating through the sky would awe any spectator watching from the ground. Up, up and away. For many people, a ride on the balloon is a once-in-a-lifetime experience and a lot of trust is put on the pilot navigating it. Every single flight is a new challenge. You know, when you're flying any, anything else, or you're still flying routes, here, you take off and you start analyzing what winds I get, wh where I can fly. It's more of a mental challenge because on the ground, the wind usually always blows directly to the sea. But you know that according to all the forecasts, over 1,000 feet, uh, 300 meters, it will turn south and you will fly into open areas behind. And that's the plus point, that you will always find really big open areas to land because it has lots of like desert around. Born into a piloting family, Lucas got his balloon license when he was 18. Now in his 10th year, he hopes to keep the art of ballooning burning for a long time to come, despite the challenges of modernization. Older pilots, are quite skeptical about balloons because they think that with more drones flying around, uh, with more restrictions, with gas getting more and more expensive, b balloons might start disappearing. One pilot recently told me, you know, you might be the last generation. Hopefully not. Yeah, hopefully not, but that's possible. What a wonderful time to be in Qatar. No matter what you choose to do here in winter, there are plenty of great activities to enjoy in perfect weather conditions. We hope you've enjoyed this episode, but that's all the time we have for now. For more, check out Euronews.com and connect with us through our hashtag. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Qatar 365.